Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we are on lesson two in Adobe Animate Classroom in a Book, and we are going to draw today um, this Mugs Coffee um, little banner that you see here. Now, it's not moving, so I know that everybody's excited and anxious to do animation, but we've got to learn how to draw first before you can make it animate. So let's get started. Go into Adobe Animate, and we want to make sure it's HTML5 Canvas. And we're going to change the size to be 700 pixels, sorry, 700 pixels, I can't speak, by 200 pixels. This sets our stage. Remember that this white area right here that we draw on is called a stage. Just to be safe, let's go ahead and save it. Let's go to File and Save As. Um, you can choose your desktop or wherever you want. I already have mine set. I'm just going to call mine Lesson 2 and my last name works for me. And hit Save. Okay. Now that we have that done, we're going to work on our coffee mug. So the first thing we're going to draw is this coffee mug right here. And a coffee mug is basically a rectangle, two ovals, and we're going to combine them to make them and take parts away and make it look like a cylinder. So let's start with the rectangle. First thing we want to do is to adjust our fill and stroke. Everybody should remember fill and stroke from Illustrator. Remember the stroke is the outline of the object, fill is the inside color. So let's click on the stroke and we're gonna adjust our stroke color to be, if I click right here, um, 663300. So 663300 and just hit the return key or enter key. We're gonna come over to our fill and we want our fill color to be CC, 6600, CC6600, and just hit return or enter. All right, now we're going to come over to our rectangle tool, and we want to draw one that's a little bit taller than it is wide. Don't worry about it so much. We're going to adjust it in just a second. Once you've gotten it drawn on your stage, we're going to click the selection tool. Now, we want to select everything before we adjust it. The way that Animate works, it makes it different than Illustrator is animate doesn't, if you click on this object, if this was Illustrator, it would select the fill and the stroke and the rectangle. In animate, you click on it, it selects the fill, but not the stroke. Or you could select the stroke, but not the fill. So you have to draw a marquee around it or double click it. Now let's come over. So remember you have properties. Properties allows you to adjust what you have here. Let's make our width 130. And let's make our height 150 and just hit the return key and that will um, get it set. You'll notice when something is selected, it's these little white dots. That's what Animate does to let you know that it's selected. So we're going to click off of it and we now have the start to our coffee cup. All right. So what we want to do next is to add ovals to it. And we're going to then get rid of some selections and make it the actual coffee cup. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is to come over here and click on the oval tool. Now remember, in the tools panel, these are your selection tools. These are your drawing tools. These are helping with animation. Um, you've got like the camera angle, the hand, the zoom tool. And then down here, you have any options that go along with it. So with the oval tool, we want this to be selected snap to objects. That means that as you draw it, it's going to snap to the edges of it. And that's what we want to do. So we're going to take and we're going to go ahead and draw an oval right about here and one right about here. That looks pretty good to me. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and get rid of areas that we don't want. So if we click on our selection tool, we can select this back area and just hit delete. Notice that again, like I told you, it would delete the fill, but not the stroke. So we had to turn around and delete the um, stroke area as well. This is the top of our coffee cup. And we're now going to select the bottom and we're going to delete these areas as well. Great. So we now have a cylinder that's going to be uh, representing our coffee cup here. We can go ahead and um, get rid of the inside of the bottom of it. So we're just going to shift select the fill and strokes that are on the bottom. So I'm just going to hold down shift. I can select them up multiple times and click that. It's now selected that and hit delete. And what we're left with, actually, I'm going to undo that for a second. I just want to click. Sorry. I just want this one at the top to be deleted. We now have the basis for our coffee cup. Okay, 
So let's move on to adjusting it to make it look a little more like a coffee cup. All right, so we're gonna grab our free transform tool and we're gonna click and drag around the entire cylinder. We are gonna hold down shift and command. Holding down shift and command while you click and drag inwards uh, will allow your edges to stay the side on both the left and the right and allow you to get a little bit more of a coffee cup look. I'm gonna do it, I think I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit more. There we go. And if I click off, you can see that I'm kind of looking a little bit more down on the inside of the coffee cup now than what I was before. Perfect. So the next thing that I want to do is to go ahead and um, adjust the sides of it a little bit. And I'm also going to make it look like we're looking down on the inside of the coffee mug and that it's got coffee on the inside of it. So let's do this. Let's use our selection tool. And you're going to select the top arc. You're going to hold down shift to select the inside arc. And we're going to do command C for copy, which is the same as going up here to going to edit copy. You can see it's command C. And then you have options. You have um, paste in center, paste in place, or just simply paste as command V. We want paste in place. So that is shift command V. So we're going to do shift command V. For paste in place. All right, we want to grab our free transform tool and it puts handles around what we just pasted in place. We're going to hold down the shift key to keep everything proportional and we want to just shrink it by about like mm, maybe 10%, something like that. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to do this same step again and we're going to adjust it so it looks like we have coffee inside the mug. So since this is already selected, let's go ahead and copy this one, Command C, and let's do Command V for paste. Um, notice it did not paste it where we want it to be, so I'm going to undo that by Command Z. This is the same as Illustrator in Photoshop, so these commands should be coming kind of fast to you guys. I'm going to select it again, hold down the Shift key so the whole um, oval is selected. Okay, and now I'm going to do Command C for copy. Again, you could go up to edit, edit copy, and I'm going to do um, paste in place. Okay, I'm going to use my down arrow key on my keyboard and just go ahead and bring this down. This is going to represent this top section right here, is going to represent um, the coffee in the mug. Okay, I'm going to click off. Now I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the parts of it that I don't need. So this bottom section right here, I do not need this. And these little extra overhangs, I do not need. There we go. And click that one. And we now have our coffee cup with the coffee on the inside. Perfect. Next thing I want to do is adjust the shape of the coffee cup and maybe just round it a little bit. Right now it looks like a to-go coffee cup. I want it to look a little more like a mug. So what I'm going to do is give it a slight bulge. If you're on your selection tool and you come over, notice that it changes to an arc like this. That just allows you to push and pull, which is a really fun, quick feature. And again, you don't even have to select it first. You're just going to push and pull. There we go. We've got a little bit more of a rounded edge. It's looking a little bit more like a coffee mug. Um, next thing I want to do is to change the inside color of this area right here. So in the tools panel, um, what I'm going to do is to select the paint bucket tool, which is right here. And it brings up properties that allows me to adjust colors. I'm going to double click this color or just click it and I'm going to change it up here. So I'm going to change it to 663333. And it almost looks a little purplish to me. Hit your return key, which is enter. And now that I have that, I can come over and I can click on the area I want to fill. So I've now made the inside of it brown um, to look a little more like coffee. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is to change the gradient on the front of the coffee mug. And um, what I want to do is to select the selection tool. And I am going to select this front fill area. I'm going to come over to my color palette and click on it. 
and instead of solid color, I'm going to change it to be a linear gradient. And it automatically brings up gray. Um, that's usually the first color gradient that it brings up, but we're going to change it and we're going to make it look a little more tan. Um, so these pointers, so I, if I click on here and everybody see these pointers right here, um, what they do is it's called a color pointer and you can change the color of it. Same thing as Illustrator, so you might remember this from Illustrator. So if I click on this color pointer to select it, I can then change the color in it. So for the one all the way to the left, let's go ahead and do FFCCC. FFCCC. And hit return. Well, that is not what I wanted. That's because I have a zero in there. <laughs> let me get rid of that. It's still there. Hang on, let me highlight it and try it again. It's a pretty turquoise color. It just wasn't what I was going for. FFCCC. And enter. No, still not going for that. Let me click this again. Make sure I have it selected. Oh, I'm missing a C. That's why. I'm sorry, guys. I was looking at this. I'm reading it right out of the book as I teach it. And so I'm, I'm missing a C. Let me see if I can do it again. This one's really giving me trouble. FFCCCC. Enter. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, and then on the right-hand side, click the color pointer over here. You're going to highlight what's called your hex numbers. You're going to highlight that. And we are going to turn it to B8621. B8621. Again, you have to hit return or enter. And that gives you a darker one. This looks pretty good so far, but I do want to go ahead and add like a highlight in the middle. So I'm going to add a color pointer. Notice as your mouse gets right here, it gives you the plus sign. I'm going to click. You have to select that color pointer, come up to your hex, highlight it, delete the hex, and now let's give it a highlight. We're going to do straight Fs. Hopefully not your grade in this class. Ha, ha, ha. F, F, F. F, 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 and hit return or enter. All right, so if we now click off of it, you can notice we have a really nice um, kind of highlight in the middle. It looks very, it looks more three-dimensional, looks good. We want to select the back selection of this coffee mug right here, and we want to change the fill color for that. So what we're going to do to do that is to deselect just by clicking on anywhere else in the stage area, and we're going to select the paint bucket tool, which is right here. Okay. And now we want to make sure that this lock fill is selected, which if you see that dark box around the back of it, that means that it's um, selected. And we want, sorry, I said selected. I meant we want to make sure it's deselected so that it doesn't have it around it. So if you saw that it was like this, that is locked. We want to deselect it so it's not locked. Um, the lock fill option just locks the current gradient to the first shape and it, extends it. We want to make the gradient for the back surface only, so we want to make it deselected, which it is right now. Okay, so with the paint bucket tool, which is right here, um, we're going to select the surface of the back coffee cup. So just click right there, and that should change it right in there. All right, so now mine has changed all over. Um, I don't know if your guys changed completely all over on the rim as well. It wasn't supposed to change the rim, um, so it's probably the way that I deleted parts of my coffee cup. So if yours looks a little different and your rim is actually dark brown, which is the way you want it to be, um, that looks good. If yours is a gradient like this, don't worry about it for right now. I'll adjust it in a second on my end, but all you'd have to do is go in and select your paint bucket fill, pick the color we had originally, and apply it back to it. All right, so hang on one minute. I'm going to adjust mine and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. I've got my coffee cup fixed. Um, let's go ahead and adjust this gradient so it's not exactly the same as this one. So with your selection tool, you're going to click on this back area. And we're going to go to, um, if you click and drag underneath, or not click and drag, but click and press underneath the free transform tool, there is the gradient transform tool. So we're going to click that. Um, what we want to do is we're going to click and just squeeze this gradient a little bit tighter. We want the highlight to come off center a little bit. And then we are going to actually reverse the shadow so that it's over towards the left-hand side, um, right about like this. Perfect. So now our coffee cup looks a little bit more realistic with the shading and the back is a little more concave. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to add a bitmap fill. And you guys want to download um, the, the cream um, file to JPEG from Google Classrooms. 
I'm going to go ahead and bring it in because I have it saved on my computer already. So what we're going to do to import to the library, we're just going to um, go to File and Import, Import to Library. And I'm going to choose this one right here. It is coffee cream JPEG. You guys again want to download that from Google Classrooms and go ahead and click open. So if I go over to my library, it is now right there. So the next thing that I want to do is to use the selection tool. And um, I want to fill this with a JPEG. Okay, we're going to use our selection tool and we're going to click on the top selection here, right where the coffee is. And we're going to go to Window and Color to open the color panel. Or you could just click on the color panel right here. And we're going to change um, to a Bitmap Fill from Solid Color. So it's right here. And here we have our option. And if I click on it, it, go, it goes ahead and fills that in for us. All right, so now it looks a little fancier. We've got some frothy looking coffee. I actually, this is what comes along with the lesson. I think it looks a little funny myself, but um, it does look a little bit more like coffee. Okay, so now that this is done, we have um, our, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see it. We now have our coffee cup done and we want to go ahead and save where we are to make sure that nothing changes. So just go to file, save, um, you can do save as if you want to double check where you're saving it. I know where mine is saving, so I'm just going to do file save. All right, I'm clicking on the timeline real quick and I'm just going to double click this layer one and I'm going to name it coffee cup and I'll save it again file save so you should now have your coffee cup we are closer to getting to the rest of this we're going to add some steam we're going to add some images in the background add some text and that will be the end of this lesson so I'll pick up the steam excuse me, the steam in the background in lesson two, part two of this one. Um, we'll stop this right here so you guys don't get um, burnout on a long tutorial. All right, let me know what questions you have. Thanks, guys.